Sunday school, the day is what you make it. Okay, it's between you and God what the day is. Okay, so every day of your life is that way. So, so let's pray in, and then we'll go into Sunday or service. Excuse me, I almost said Sunday school again. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with us, the Lord, today, Lord. We ask you to be with all of us, Lord. Be with me to, to provide your word in an understanding and meaningful way that that this congregation can take something from it, Lord, and and go out and glorify your name with it. We ask you to be with us as we go through this week. Put a hedge of protection around us, Lord, as you have been, and we thank you for that. We ask you to continue doing that, Lord, so that we can glorify your name, because that's all that matters, is the glorification of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today's um, sermon... You got all the 85 Bible verses ready up there, Jake? There we go. Not quite 85, but if you notice, every week that I come up here, I always sit there and say, hey, I'm sorry that there's so many Bible verses, okay? And, and, and rightfully so. I mean, when you're in high school, when you're in college, and you do a paper, you have to have notes. Right, and it would be down at the bottom of the page, and that is to do what? To show you where you got that information from. Number one, number two, is to prove your findings in it. Okay, so that's why there's so many of them, you know. And I apologize, but you know, we'll 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 get some uh, church pens out here soon as a so that uh, we won't be wasting all your ink and your pen. So, today's sermon is called, It's Commanded. Okay? It's Commanded. First thing when I think about it being commanded would be naval. You know, being like in the Navy, a commander tells you what he commands you to do something. Right? Whether it's mopping floors or it's fixing an engine, you know, it's given an order, right, something that you are to do, what happens if you don't, there's consequences, correct, so commanding a thing that is, well, I'll do it tomorrow, or I'll do it Wednesday, it's right then and there, okay, and that's what God does, uh, that's what God commands us to do when we are Okay? It's a command. It is not a suggestion. Okay? And all those Bible verses, believe it or not, has something to prove on my point on that. Okay? So, Matthew 18, 21 through 22, it reads, Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how oft shall I, or shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him till seven times? Jesus said unto, as we all know, right? This is pretty popular scripture. I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. I mean, Peter came, comes up to God. Comes up to God. That's who Jesus is, is God. And says, how many times should I forgive this cat that keeps bothering me? Now, when he's talking about brother, he's not talking about a sibling, okay? All right, you, me, we're brothers and sisters in Christ, okay? That's who he's talking about. He's talking about strangers. He's talking about the, the mailman that keeps putting, not closing the door and it rains and it gets all your stuff wet. You know what I'm saying? The guy who puts your eggs on the bottom of the grocery bag, right? And when you get home, they're broke. Right? That's what I'm, that's your brothers. And that's your sisters. Okay? Not just the siblings that you can't stand and you know you, anyway. Right? We're talking about brothers and sisters in Christ. So so what's seven times seventy? Four thousand nine hundred? 
Okay, somewhere around there, or maybe four four hundred ninety. Right? Somewhere around there. Seven times seven. Anyway, it's a lot. Okay. So does God mean? Okay, let's say the number is four hundred ninety. Okay. So four hundred ninety comes up, right? On Thursday. So after Thursday, guess what? You don't have to forgive nobody no more, right? Oh, so what you're saying is that 7 times 7, that 490, that's for each person? Well, that ain't cool. That's a lot of forgiving, isn't it? It's a lot of time, too, if you think about it, right? I mean, number one, you have to, you have to prepare a quiet place, right? Number two, you have to really forgive the person, right? And then number three, you have to contact God and ask for forgiveness for that. Right? And then you have to wait for God to come back to you. That's a lot of time. A lot of time. But all we got is time, right? Got to forgive. But think about it. That time, that lot of time that I was talking about, right? Okay. Who are you with? during most of that time. You're with God, right? So you're spending your time with your father. Therefore, much better thing to do other than that? No. So maybe this is your path to, <laughs> to spending more time with God. Luke 17, 3 and 4 reads, It takes, take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he trespasses against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in the days turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Okay, we're going to get back to this one in a minute, okay? Because there's a, there's a um, directions here for you. Okay. Matthew 18:35 said, "So likewise shall my father, shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your heart forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses." Okay. I'm not a big fan of old English. Okay, this is like Shakespearean English type of thing. Okay. So what God is saying here, or what Jesus is telling them, is that do unto others. Right? It's a big golden rule in, in the Catholic Church. Do unto others as you would have to do unto you. Okay? But it's something that Jesus is saying right here. If you fail to forgive somebody, okay, God is going to fail to forgive you. Okay? We were talking about Halloween, okay, at, at Sunday school. Why do it if it may put you in danger, peril? You know what I mean? Like, why would you stick your finger in a light socket when you know there's electricity there? So, if there could be possible distractions from your walk with God, why do it? Okay? So, why not forgive somebody when you know the rule is, and it has right here, right? Do unto others as you would have done upon thing not do to others what you want to do to them that don't work get you in trouble okay so what you're doing here is that you, you remember that movie pay it forward where you do a kind deed for somebody and then they do a kind deed for somebody and then seven and seven and seven and seven go all the way out this is basically that you forgive somebody okay you show them your an act of kindness all right when you forgive them. Alright? Ephesians 4.32 says, And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has given you. Or forgiven you, excuse me. Do unto others 
as you would have them do unto you. Okay? Follow God's word because it's commanded. Why should we forgive? I mean, why should we give? I mean, driving down the road, somebody cuts you off, maybe even wave at you, right? Right? I'm glad y'all understood what I'm saying, okay? Why should you forgive that person? He almost killed you. He almost killed you, though. Why should you even forgive him? And, he, and he, that, that may be, that is your brother and sister in Christ. Even if they don't know it yet. Okay, everybody's your brother and sister in Christ. Everybody. Whether they're Muslim, okay? I mean, it doesn't matter what religion they are. They're your brother and sister in Christ. They just don't know it yet. Okay? And by us forgiving them, it's showing an act of kindness that may be chipping away for their direction to glorify God. Now, if you throw that hand back at them, why well, after they cut you off, that's not forgiveness. Okay? Just to let you know. You know? And if you throw the JC word at them too, that's not forgiveness. All right? You're not you're not anointing them. That's like my mom and dad used to say. Oh, you know, like, ooh. And they're like, well, we're just anointing you, son. It's all right. Stupid kid. But, but everybody's our brothers and sisters. So, I mean, and the Lord tells us to forgive our brothers and sisters, right? What will happen if we don't? I mean, seriously, what happens, you know, on a good day for me, and I'm being honest, okay, a good day for me, probably three out of ten that I would forgive other people, because I can hold a grudge, all right? I'm half Irish, I can hold a grudge. So, but, and, it, and, and honestly, this is something that I struggle with, all right? You know? Am I uh, forgiving somebody just to get brownie points? Am I forgiving somebody? Do I even care if I forgive that person? Okay? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there has been t I mean, there has been times, and probably still holding on to a couple of them, to be honest with you, okay, that I ain't going to talk to you, all right? You did me wrong. I, I mean, you're gone. I mean, it's like you've never existed in my life, and that's how it moves on. I mean, I had good teachers. Well, really good teachers, but yeah. Yeah. They're talking to me right now, so. Anyway, so, it's our duty to forgive, okay? Even if it's the most heinous thing, it's not our... It's not our job to judge, okay? It's God's jo job to judge, okay? For us to judge other people is stupid, all right? Sorry for the S word, but... But what will happen to you? In Matthew 6, 15, it says, But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither would your Father forgive you, okay? So that's when you go to God and you sit there and say, God, I'm sorry that I yelled at that guy today in, in the grocery store. God's going to go, what? Are you really sorry? Or are you just playing a, a role? Because you're supposed to. Okay? No supposed to things happen if it's not from the heart. Matthew 18, 35 says, So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you if ye from your heart forgive not everyone his brothers their trespasses. Okay, it's some more old English, okay, but what it's saying is that you forgive everybody. Okay? Not my friends, I'll forgive them. Okay? But that guy in that car, okay, or that guy at that job, I ain't forgiving them. So I can pick and choose whatever I want. But if it's from the heart, what God's saying right here is that not only 
the ones that you go from your heart, okay? All right, are, are, let's say they're hanging out here, okay? These are the ones from your heart. These are the ones from, oh, I'm just saying it to get long. Okay, to look good in front of everybody else. Okay? They wash. Okay? So your repenting of your sins, okay, are still there. There's no more repenting on them. Okay? Because you refuse to give your forgiveness to your brother or your sister. It's kind of tricky stuff if you think about it, okay? But but God has the plan for us, okay? And that's when we were talking about in Matthew 18, 15, or excuse me, in Luke. I'm sorry. Luke 17, yeah. 17, 3 through 4. Here's the plan, okay? His word says you have a right to rebuke. Okay, you, rebuke means to get on somebody, right? That's how I always thought rebuke me, and I always thought it was a hard word, okay? Because all the all the priests and all the nuns would say, you need a rebuke, you know? Which, by the way, wasn't nice, okay? But it always seems like a stern word for me, okay? So God tells you you have a right to rebuke, okay? But God tells you in a way that When you go to somebody, okay, and you're rebuking them, what you're telling them is that they did something wrong to you, okay? You're letting them know that you, you hurt my feelings, okay? I know I, that doesn't sound real macho or anything, but but you need to show them your their fault, what they did, let them know, okay, and tell them about it. You need to state your feelings. Okay? Be completely honest. Let it come from your heart. Because we know. Come on. How many times you have people come up and apologize to you and you know dang well all they were giving you was lip service? Right? But when somebody comes from their heart and, and apologizes to them, you know that is just as fast as the other one, correct? So you have to be from the heart. Okay? And then. Most of all, you have to be ready to forgive. Okay? Because if you're not ready to forgive, then all that other stuff ain't going to work. All right? Approach the person in a nice, calm voice. Okay? No finger poking. Okay? Because if you want to rile somebody up real quick, you start pointing a finger at somebody. You know? You know what you did? You let my dogs out of the yard. But I forgive you. That's working, right? You know, a more pleasant way, if you want it, is, you know, I don't know if if you had, you know, if you went in my backyard or something, but, you know, somebody left my gate open, you know, and my dog got out, but, you know, not saying it's you, but if it was, I forgive you. Okay? Yeah. And if you come back in my yard, I'm going to pull out my gun, right? I just ruined everything, didn't I? Amen. Didn't I? Didn't I just ruin it? Okay? Now, it can't be also a scorecard. You know what I mean? You can't sit there and apologize to somebody just so that you got a little chip in your pocket right now. Say, okay, well, you let my dog out. Mm, your dog. Okay, now you got to forgive me for kicking your dog. It's not about that. It's not about seeking revenge. Okay? Now, Nancy's going to come over and steal all our dogs now. She thinks I'm all around kicking them. But the responsibility to repent is stressed in God's word. Okay? He should take... Now, we're talking about after we come to him nice, okay, and we tell him about it, right? Nicely, right? From the heart, right? And no bless your heart or anything like that saying in there, correct? Because we all know what that means. All right? So, <laughs> I'll tell you. Yeah.
Bless your heart, right. It's never really a good thing, okay? Um, speaking from experience, it's never been really a good thing. But the person who offended you after you went to them, okay, if they're a God-fearing person, okay, to respond back to you should take responsibility of, hey, I'm sorry, I, I thought I locked or closed the gate back up. I apologize. Do you need help going and find them? Type of thing, okay? Um, he should repent of his wrongdoing, okay? He should be sincere that he did something wrong that caused you to turn off. All right? So all that's good, right? Most of all, though, it's continual. Continual, excuse me. Okay, forgiveness is continual. Yes, okay? Because anybody that has kids in here, all right, knows you tell them one thing, all right, don't do that. Five minutes later, they're right back doing what you told them not to do. Okay? So it has to be continued. You have to, you know, it's not like, okay, that's the third time I told you. You know what they're getting on? You get Mr. <laughs> Belt, you know? No, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that you, you know, that that corporal punishment is not a corrective issue that can, can work, okay? Um, but I, what I'm saying is that to the average person, you're not going to take your belt off and whoop them, okay? You want to, but you're not going to do it, all right? So you're going to tell them, you're going to repent, and have them repent back to you, and everything's good. If they mess up again, what, what was that one, seven times how much? Right, okay? I mean, the, the silly thing about it, the clicker, you know, the little, the number clicker that you're clicking, when it goes to 490, then it starts all over again, as y'all were telling me, right? So it could be a lot. So we talked about it needs to be pure of heart when you forgive them, right? You're not keeping tally. Remember, you're not keeping that little chit in your pocket, you know, to pull out on say, you owe me. Yeah. Right? And there's no hoping that you to get revenge. You know, you can't do it and sit there and, and sit there and say, well, I forgave him. Because I'm better than he is. Okay. I'm I'm the bigger man because I forgave him. Or if you're saying that, you never forgave him. Okay? He has not been forgiven by you. And then, last of all, forgiveness is governed by compassion. Compassion. You know what that means, right? All the ladies know that, right? Guys really don't know that a whole lot, though. Our compassion is sitting there rushing dirt on it. Right? There's no prayer. But there's one thing that, that, this is off subject, okay? There's one thing during the Olympics, because my watch wa watched all the Olympics. Every, every second that was on TV, she watched it, okay? Remember the old cliche, ah, you hit like a girl. I was watching these Australian rugby, girl rugby team. And this girl came up and clapped this girl, and I'm talking about stunned her back like this. I can't use that phrase no more, cause, cause she brought she brought the wood. I mean it it was it was cool, but anyway, yeah. And she got up and she forgave the other person. So, it was so, nice. <laughs> so forgiveness is governed by compassion. Okay, there should be no restrictions. Okay, I'll forgive you as long as you don't do this. All right? If you do this, there's no forgiveness. Okay? Y'all thinking about that? That'd be kind of hard to do, is it not? Somebody killed your child? Could you forgive them? Someone ran over your cat? I keep moving, and the microphone don't pick up when I go over there, but sorry. So, if somebody did you wrong to a point, I mean, what what's the limit? No limit. Really? What's the limit that God has on you? How many, how many penalties can you make? 
Is it like the NBA? Six and you're out? No? Is it like in football with targeting? Now you're out of the game if you hit a guy too hard? Yeah, I got this. There's no limit? I'm not going to ask y'all what you think about sending the guy out of a football game if he hit another guy too hard. But that's just my politics, so I'll leave that in my pocket. And there should be no reservations. It's from the heart, okay? That means it's from the heart. There's no restrictions. There's no reservations, okay? There's no, well, I'll, I'll talk to him Thursday. If it's from the heart, you're going to go talk to him right away, okay? And if that person means anything to you, you're going to talk to him right away, okay? Because if you don't, you're really not from the heart. Once again, forgiveness is governed by compassion. To be truly forgiven to somebody, it has to be truly from the heart. Okay? As long as you offer it, okay, everything's cool. If they don't accept it, then you move on. Okay? I mean, there is steps in this where you go and talk to the person, okay, and if nothing comes from that, okay, then you are going to your church elders, okay, and you present it to your church elders, okay, and if nothing happens from that, then it goes, keeps going up further and further and further to, there's excommunication on parts of this where forgiveness isn't, isn't rendered, okay, but we're not, uh, you know, we're not about that, okay. We're about talking with our God, all right? Letting him know that follow his rules and then govern our forgiveness by compassion. Because that's what Jesus did, did he not? I mean, people wanting to kill him. And he's still praying for them, okay? Not praying for yourself. Not asking God for forgiveness on you, okay? but asking God to give you forgiveness for them. I played loose with the words there, didn't I? But God loves you, okay? And if you're in constant communication with God, then all is good, all right? Some other people need some help, and that's what God has us here for. So let me leave you with this. Matthew 18, 18, okay? Or surely I say to you, this is Jesus speaking of. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So in other words, this is practice. Okay? So what you do in practice, okay, is what you're going to have in the game of heaven. Alright? So, I hope some of this filled your heart, educated you, and most of all, don't ever rely on me, okay? If something isn't right in there, okay, or you think it's too easy, go to the Word. I gave you all the scriptures, right? I gave you half the book there, right? So you go and you check me, and if I'm wrong, come tell me. I mean, I'm fine with it. I'm just, I'm giving you what God gave me last night. And I had like five topics and was going back and forth in between them. So so God chose me to do this one, and I hope you enjoyed it. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you once again, Lord, for loving us, for guiding us, and most of all, just loving us, Lord. Be with us as we go through this week, Lord, so that we can magnify your name. We can lift up the glory of your love, Lord, and let everybody see it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.